the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association and the Florida Department of Agriculture present Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson. Also presented by Adina Springs South, Daily Racing Form, Double Diamond Farm, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Ocala Breeders Sales Company, Valerie Daly of Showcase Properties, and Woodford Thoroughbreds. Hi everyone, I'm Kate and Bradar filling in for John Henderson on this edition of Thoroughbred Week. Featuring a pair of million dollar races for three year olds from Parks Racing, the Grade 1 Cotillion Stakes and the Grade 2 Pennsylvania Derby. We begin with the Kentucky Downs Ladies Turf Stakes. I'm Already Sexy, the 8 to 5 favorite. John Lees has the call. They dip down for the term now. I'm already sexy. He's got the lead. Five eights to go. Now getting some company from Unbridled Courage, who dropped over to show more speed. And she comes to force the hand of the favorite early. And they get away mid race here. Some pressure in front by two and a half lengths. Park Monceau, third at the half mile pole. Serene Melody, without being asked, is now gaining in four. Sugar Shock is back to fifth. Kiss Moon with the red, sixth and five off the leaders. Now Sunset Glows moving in. And she begins to close on the outside of horses now with three furlongs to go. Sunset Glows making a big Big move right now. And it's back to Biddy Kitty, Lucy's Revenge, and far off to Lori's store. Coming for the top of the stretch, Kent DeSormo on Sunset Glow has to push her now. She made this huge run around the turn, and she's coming up here to take on I'm Already Sexy. Still there too, now Kiss Moon getting involved. Then it's back to Serene Melody. Sunset Glow's gonna have to stay with it. Here's Kiss Moon. Kiss Moon, I'm Already Sexy, battles on at the rail. I'm Already Sexy, switching leads. Kiss Moon, Sunset Glow on her inside lead. It's Kiss Moon in a driving finish. Kiss Moon, I'm already sexy. Sunset Glow, Kiss Moon. Kiss Moon wins it by a head. Kiss Moon by Spendthrift Farm Stallion Malibu Moon holds off I'm already sexy officially by a neck. Corey Lannery aboard the Keeneland Sales graduate in 136 flat. Winner of the Grade 3 Mint Julep Stakes in June, Kiss Moon was coming off a fifth place finish in the West Virginia Senate President's Cup. The four-year-old filly was bred in Kentucky by Hermitage Farm. Kiss Moon has earned $530,000 for Carl Pollard. To Belmont Park for turf fillies and mares in the Grade 3 Noble Damsel Stakes. Coffee Click, the 2-1 to one favorite. Larry Colmus has the call. Miss Frost is the leader as they move for the turn. Two to play AC. Continues to run along in second position. Outside of them, it's Devilish Love in third. They went a half in 46 and one-fifth seconds. It's been an honest, solid pace so far. Then Recepta and Marlboro's down on the inside. Lady Laura is in the midst of her run outside of Recepta. She's going to have to go five wide, though. And after that, it is Crowley's Lawn, Baffle Me, and they make their way toward the top of the stretch. Miss Frost is the leader. Devilish Love on the outside is second. Recepta third, Lady Laura very wide there. Then Tuta Paisi, and looking for running room on the inside is Ma Rose. Coffee Clicks looking to gain ground two with Crowley's Law coming as well. Into the final furlong, Recepta. Lady Laura to the outside, and then comes Crowley's Law. Recepta's in front, close to home. Lady Laura on the outside, Crowley's Law, and Coffee Click down to the line. Recepta won it. Six to one Recepta by Windstar Farm Stallion Spitestown, the winner by half a length over Lady Lara. Elvis Trujillo aboard the Keeneland Sales graduate in 133 and one. Back to back stakes victories for Recepta, who was last seen taking the Della Rose stakes at Saratoga. The four year old filly was bred in Kentucky by John Phillips and Hank Snowden and was a $410,000 Keeneland September yearling. Recepta has earned $381,000 for Phillips Racing Partnership and Pam Garten. Darby Dan Stallion dialed in. Grade 1 Florida Derby winner by AP Indy's only horse of the year, Mineshaft. Dialed in's tremendous first crop yearlings have been well received at auction, averaging over 12 times his stud fee, including a $270,000 colt at the Keeneland July sale, purchased by Zayat Stables. To Laurel Park for male turf horses in the Grade 2 Commonwealth Cup. Up with the birds, the nine to five favorite. Dave Rodman picks up the call. So still an easy clip out there for cut to order and heavy on Toledo, three quarters of a length. Sheldon Russell got a legendary right there alongside in second. Mr. Speaker still at the real third and talk show man is outside of Mr. Speaker running in fourth. Up with the birds followed by El Jefe Grande and Golden Glint is last. Not much change as they round that far turn, the six and one 13 flat. 
And so cut to orders, been in front every step of the way. Legendary trying to ratchet up that pressure and pour it on for the final quarter of a mile. And here is Mr. Speaker, third on the far outside. Up with the birds is driving wide and forth. They're into the stretch now. Legendary Mr. Speaker on the outside. And Mr. Speaker now in a tussle with Legendary for the final furlong. Mr. Speaker and Jose Ortiz driving. Legendary trying second at the 16th pole. It's going to be Mr. Speaker in the Commonwealth Cup. Two to one second choice, Mr. Speaker, the winner by a length and a quarter over legendary. Jose Ortiz up in 147 and three. The Suge McGahee trainee records his first stakes victory since scoring a 23 to one upset in the grade one Belmont Derby at three. The four-year-old Colt by Pulpit, out of a daughter of undefeated champion personal ensign, was bred in Kentucky by his owner, Phipps Stable. Mr. Speaker has a bankroll of $1,220,000. There's more racing coming up, but first, here's the weekend schedule in the Breeders' Cup Win and You're In Challenge Series. The advantages of nominating and winning a Breeders' Cup Challenge Series race are clear. For more information about the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series and nominations, go to members.breederscup.com because the best is yet to come. Point of entry would not be denied. And they're into the stretch. Point of entry's taking the lead. Point of entry, a two-length lead. It's point of entry taking the lead. Point of entry will go to the Breeders' On Cup. On a five-race winning streak. Five-time grade one winner from a deep Phipps family. With the pedigree and physical to become the heir of Dinah Former. Point of entry. Standing at Adina Springs. A Florida bred. He is not just a racehorse. He is our heart. He is our toil and sweat. He soaks up the bright sunshine, becoming mighty and strong. He feasts on our abundant grass and drinks our mineral rich water. He is a way of life, our champion. His excellence brings us chills as he competes, inspiring us to greatness. He is our purpose, our soul. He is a Florida bred. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with three-year-old fillies featured in this segment. First stop is Churchill Downs for the Grade 3 Dogwood Stakes. Super Majesty, the even money favorite. Travis Stone has the call. And the speedy Super Majesty comes on to take the lead. The quarter's on the board in 22 and 3. She leads by a length. Pleasant Tails in pursuit at a second. Huasca's right there to the outside in third. Two lengths back. Kath Balu asks for a bit more speed racing fourth. Zevit is down inside fifth. Ama Looker's advancing from sixth. Sweet Success is back in seventh. All Day Alice cutting the corner eighth. Street Song is ninth as they come to the top of the stretch where Super Majesty is still the leader. Super Majesty off to turn in front by two. Huasca fighting on. Ama Looker's picking through the pack. Kath Balu far outside. Way out there. Street Song late bid, but in the meantime, Time. Super Majesty has kicked away to lead by three. On the far outside, Chide is finishing fast. Super Majesty needs that wire, and she will get there. Super Majesty by Windstar Farm Stallion, Super Saver. The front-running winner by a length and three quarters over Chide. Alex Solis aboard the Keeneland sales graduate in 123 flat. 
After impressively winning her first two starts, the Jerry Hollendorfer trainee was beaten a nose in an allowance optional claimer at Del Mar. The winner was bred in Kentucky by Windstar Farm. A $400,000 two-year-old purchase, Super Majesty has earned $133,000 for LNJ Foxwoods. The filly was consigned by TaylorMade Sales Agency to the 2013 Keeneland September Yearling Sale, where she was purchased by Sunshine Stable for $100,000. Grade 3 Dogwood Stakes winner Super Majesty, the Keeneland Sales Graduate of the Week. Next, the Grade 3 Charlestown Oaks, Sarah Sis, the 3-2 favorite. Jeff Cernick has the call. Down on the inside, Hot City Girl still with the lead. Set that quarter at 22 and 4, the half mile 46 and 3. It's still Hot City Girl trying to take them all the way. In second, right there on the outside, glued to the leader is Tootsie Rules. And behind them, here comes Temperament Patty, rolling up into third, back in fourth, Fusiachi Red. And from the back of the pack now, White Clover plummeting to the real rare is Sarah Sis. They head for home. Hot City Girls got the lead. Trying to get to them still is Tootsie Rules. Down the center, racing in third. That is Temperament Patty. Gate to wire. Hot City Girl. 7-1 to one, Hot City Girl takes the field. Gate to wire to defeat Temperament Patty by two and a half lengths. Jose Ortiz aboard the New York Red in 123-4. and four. The first stakes victory for Hot City Girl, who is coming off a fifth place finish in the Grade 1 Mother Goose Stakes. The filly by City Zip was bred in New York by Eclectico Stable and is a half-sister to multiple graded stakes winner and millionaire La Verdad. Trained by Linda Rice, Hot City Girl has earned $344,000 for Lady Sheila Stable. Spendthrift Farm leading freshman sire Arch 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 has already sired nine first crop two-year-old winners to date, including the Bob Baffert trained colt Taves on Ice, impressive seven and a half length winner of the $100,000 Barrett's Juvenile last Sunday. Arch 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 is currently being offered at $5,000 stands and nurses for 2016. States. When you own a New York bred, your horse can run for more than $44 million in purses restricted to registered New York breds. And the New York program pays awards to breeders, owners, and stallion owners when their New York breds finish first, second, or third at New York tracks. We have the quality. Day at the spa all the way. You have the opportunity. New York breds, get with the program. The best program. Combining the legacy of Kentucky with the fertile breeding ground of Florida, Woodford Thoroughbreds proudly introduces in 2014 Warfront's best son to stand at stud, multiple graded stakes winner, Sold Out, and juvenile grade one winner of the hopeful stakes, Currency Swap. Woodford Thoroughbreds, where a new generation of horse racing excellence has begun. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with the Grade 2 Pennsylvania Derby coming up in this segment. 
Three-Year-Old Stakes Action is presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. Three-Year-Old Sprinters at Parks Racing in the Grade 3 Gallant Bob Stakes. Limousine Liberal, the 2-1 to one favorite. Keith Jones has the call. Three furlongs to go. Trouble Kid has pulled away to a two and a half length lead. Limousine Liberal, though, moving very comfortably. Beginning to close that gap from second. Recount has dropped back third. Grand Billy unwinding with a run on the outside. Grand Billy now up within three and a half lengths of the lead. Hebronville circling up at the far outside. Limousine Liberal taking dead aim at Trouble Kid as they turn for home. After a half of 44 and one, Trouble Kid still there. Here comes Limousine Liberal. The late runners getting involved as well. Bayer to the inside. Grand Billy on the outside. It's Hebronville. Trouble Kid still in front. Limousine Liberal on the outside. Bayer late bit down on the inside. Trouble Kid still has the lead coming to the finish at 13 to one. Trouble Kid has done it. 13 to one Trouble Kid, the front running winner by a neck over odds on favorite Limousine Liberal. Joshua Navarro, the winning jockey in 110 and two. Since being claimed for $15,000 out of a runner-up finish at Parks in July, Trouble Kid has won three consecutive starts for trainer Ramon Preciado and owner Barbara Hopkins, including a 16 and a half length victory and a $25,000 maiden claimer. The gelding was bred in Kentucky by Morris Floyd, Pat Farah, Dan Sujoika, and Dave Alban, and was a $21,000 yearling. Trouble Kid has earned nearly $219,000. For all your insurance needs, a specialist at Jerry Parks Insurance Group is there to assist you with 40 years of exceptional coverage. Look for Jerry Parks, John Cassie, or Kelly Weeks at the yearling sales. To Woodbine for the Grade 3 Ontario Derby, Billy Starr, the 7 to 5 favorite. Robert Geller has the call. Decision Day continues on. The half mile was 50 and it's Decision Day with a half mile to run in the Ontario Derby by a length ethical funds. Two to Lucky Lindy is third. A neck away beat goes on. Fire Spike the outside. Billy Star back second last and Breaking Lucky remains at the back. They swing down to the 5 16th. Decision Day by a length. Lucky Lindy the first to make a run. Fire Spike the outside. Up the rails beat goes on. Now Breaking Lucky coming around the outside. Billy Star is held up at the back. They corner and Lucky Lindy on the outside's gone to the front. Decision Day under pressure down the outside. Breaking Lucky's running a big race is coming on. But Lucky Lindy has completely trounced them today. Oh, Lucky Lindy's opened up a huge lead. Down the outside is Billy Starr. But it's Robbie Alvarado and Lucky Lindy sailing home. Three and a half lengths to Billy Starr. Five to two second choice Lucky Lindy draws off to defeat Billy Starr by three and three quarter lengths. Robbie Alvarado aboard in 150 and 3. Second in the Toronto Cup and third in the Breeders' Stakes on turf, Lucky Lindy switches to the poly track to record his first stakes victory. The Colt by Harlan's Holiday was bred in Ontario by George Strawbridge Jr. Lucky Lindy's earned $186,000 for Augustine Stable. Mark Frosted trains the winner. DRF Breeding, home of the new Sire Powered Results Tool. Access race results from North America, visit drf.com slash breeding for additional information. To Laurel Park for the Grade 2 Commonwealth Derby on turf. Force the pass, the 2-5 to five favorite. Dave Rodman has the call. It's one go, all go, making all the running up front. Leads it by a length and three quarters. Go around second, gallery is third. Force the pass, now out in the clear, racing fourth. Ask for a little more run is fourth. The pass to the outside. Force the pass. Now takes third as they round that far turn. Then back to Great Dancer, third last position, followed by Majestic Pride. And out of the inside is Fundamental. So it has been one go, I'll go. Go around, and coming around them is forced to pass the far outside. And here's Great Dancer toward the center of the track. Tipping off the inside is Fundamental. He's got a bit of late kick and trying to quicken on there. Down to the inside is Gallery. They're coming through the final furlong. One go, I'll go. Forced the pass, working hard to get there. And the outside is Fundamental. Deeper out is Great Dancer. Down to the final yards. It's one go, I'll go. And he went all the way. 35 to 1, one go, all go, goes all the way to defeat Fundamental by a length. Ronald Hisby up in 148 and 1. A close third in the Grade 3 Arlington Washington Futurity at 2, one go, all go, records his first stakes victory. The Virginia bred Colt by Fairbanks was disqualified from an apparent victory in an allowance optional claimer at Indiana Grand in his turf debut. A $40,000 two year old, one go, all go, has earned $272,000. Pavel Matejka trains the winner for Preston Stables and Preston Wood Racing.
back to Parks Racing now for the Grade 2 Pennsylvania Derby. Frosted, the even money favorite. Once again, here's Keith Jones. And they're off in the Pennsylvania Derby. Iron Fist being hustled out of there. Mr. Z steps out from the outside. Battle Midway comes on. Island Town on the inside. Frosted will be taken back. Frosted is sixth and down inside as they pass under the line for the first time. Mr. Z quickly able to cross over and he'll lead the way to the first turn. Mr. Z on top. Moving up three wide is Island Town with Iron Fist in between horses. Frosted a spot down inside. He'll be fourth now as they round that first turn. Upstart comes on outside to be fifth. Battle Midway is sixth. Made from Lucky and Tommy Macho. The two Pletcher horses are on the outside of the racetrack. They're side by side going to the back stretch. Both just about six lengths back right now. Another two and a half to late running. War Story was at the back 24 and one. So that is a pretty slow first quarter here for Mr. Z, who goes to the 5 eighths pole in front three quarters of a length. Iron Fist up and on the pace. He's second on the outside. It's now about three, three and a half to Island Town. Frosted moving up to his inside. Those two now both moving a bit closer with a half mile to go. Upstart lost a bit of ground. He's fifth on the outside, just better than four back, matching fractions for a half of 48 and two. Could be a sprint to the finish here in the Pennsylvania Derby. Iron Fist going up after Mr. Z. So Iron Fist gets first run. They round the far turn. On the inside, Mr. Z on the outside, Iron Fist. And Iron Fist goes by to take the lead, but here comes Frosted. He looms a factor now. He makes his bit on the outside. Tommy Macho within striking range. War Story. Try to make a bid from way back, but they come off the turn, and here comes Frosted. Big surge from Frosted on the outside, and Frosted has taken the lead outside the eight pole. Iron Fist on the inside, second. Tommy Macho try to close late on the outside, but Frosted pulling away. Look at Frosted. Frosted a length and a half. Make it two. Iron Fist giving his best, but he's second best to Frosted, who is full of run at the finish. Frosted strikes home. A two-length winner. Even money favorite Frosted runs by 10 to 1 Iron Fist to score by two lengths. Joel Rosario up in 150 flat, a 106 buyer speed figure. Frosted records his first victory since he captured the Grade 1 Wood Memorial in April. Fourth in the Kentucky Derby and runner up to American Pharoah in the Belmont Stakes. The Kieran McLaughlin trainee was last seen finishing third in the Grade 1 Traverse Stakes after dueling with the Triple Crown winner. The Colt by Tappet was bred in Kentucky by Darley. Frosted has earned $2,062,000 for Godolphin Racing. Joel Rosario with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Fans, the safest way to the winner's circle. Coming up, a top filly finally gets a grade one victory. Sunshine State. Bahamian Squall in front from Trini Burke. Jackson Ben Four outside. It's Bahamian Squall to win the smile. People want to know what's so special about Ocala. Centrally located between Orlando and Jacksonville, Ocala's equine industry has many incentives to breed, raise, and train thoroughbreds. Discover Ocala. Reach out to showcase properties and we'll show you why we love where we live. Since Florida's first Kentucky Derby winner, Needles, in 1956, Florida has produced 50 national champions, the 11th Triple Crown winner, 13 classic winners, 155 millionaires, memorable performances, and 26 Breeders' Cup winners. Produce your next champion in Florida. Hey racing fans, with EmpireCityBets.com you can now place wagers from the comfort of home on thoroughbred and harness tracks around the world. Empire City Bets is an advanced deposit wagering service that offers both internet and phone wagering. With EmpireCityBets.com you get sign-up bonuses up to $300, weekly promotions and daily rewards on most tracks, including an industry high of 8% on Yonkers races. You also enjoy live video and race replays, and with exclusive content from some of the best handicappers around, there's no other place you'll want to bet. Don't race to any other site, race to EmpireCityBets.com.
Time now for the feature race of the week, presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. To Parks Racing for three-year-old fillies in the grade one cotillion stakes. I'm a chatterbox, the two to one favorite. Here's the call by Keith Jones. And they're off. And a quick start for Take Charge Brandy. She came bouncing right out of there. Embellish the lace moves up with her inside position. Calamity Kate is up after the lead from the outside and Calamity Kate will go on to get that lead. Take Charge Brandy is second, embellish the lace protecting her position down at the inside and she'll now come up to be second as they arrive at the first turn. I'm a Chatterbox has also had a good spot. She's down inside sitting in fourth. On the outside, it's now Keen Pauline who moves up to be fifth, a length and a half to a three wide Eskin for money. She'll be sixth onto the back stretch. Pangburn is seventh with six furlongs to go. She's got about seven to make up, another length back to Peace and War. Tara's Tango is inside toward the back of the pack. She's flanked by Don't Forget About Me, and Stroke Play will have to rally past them all. The quarter was a solid 23 and two. They move up the back stretch. It's Calamity Cater's in front three quarters of a length. Embellish the Lace continues to track the pace from the inside. She's second by two. Take Charge Branding on the outside third. I'm a Chatterbox gets a nudge to get closer. She's now fourth on the inside. She's up within three lengths of the lead. Keen Pauline has been taken to the outside. Eskin for money. Beginner to launch a rally on the far outside. They went the half in 47 and two, and they approach the 5 16th pole. Calamity Kate off the rail, still holding on to the lead. Embellish the lace, trying to get to her from the inside. I'm a chatterbox has worked out a good trip. Don't forget about me as it a contention with a big bit on the far outside. Peace and War is making a bid down at the inside. Calamity Kate has given way to Eskin for money as they come off the turn, and they come down to the last furlong now. Here comes I'm a chatterbox on the outside. Calamity Kate, I'm a chatterbox, and I'm a chatterbox is ready to take the lead. It's I'm a chatterbox who begins to pull away from Calamity Kate, and I'm a chatterbox is going to come home a clear cut winner. I'm a chatterbox wins it just over two at the end. I'm a chatterbox takes it by two lengths over 22 to one long shot Calamity Kate. Florent Giroux aboard the Keeneland sales graduate in 144 and two. I'm a chatterbox finally joins the ranks of grade one stakes winners third in the Kentucky Oaks and disqualified from first in the grade one coaching club American Oaks. The Larry Jones trainee was coming off a runner up finish to embellish the lace in the grade one Alabama stakes. The Villa by Munnings was bred in Kentucky by her owners Fletcher and Carolyn Gray. This victory puts I'm a Chatterbox over $1.3 million in career earnings. I'm a Chatterbox paid $6.20 to win and is the Malone's favorite of the week presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. The big weekend for Breeders' Cup hopefuls with grade one win in your end stakes from Belmont Park and Santa Anita. We'll have those races plus three-year-olds in the grade three Oklahoma Derby from Remington Park. That and much more next week here on Thoroughbred Week. For John Henderson, I'm Kate Bradar. Thanks for watching. Thoroughbred Week is presented by the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association and the Florida Department of Agriculture. Online at tbreadweek.com.